My name's Ian Calder. I'm currently Director of Operations and Standards at a company called ESI Monitor. Uh, the ESI stands for Environmental and Social Impact. And we're a startup. Uh, we were founded in 2019, but we've been rapidly expanding since then. And we've now uh, just recently gone over our 100th customer, which is very, very exciting. We help companies to um, measure, manage, and minimize their footprints on the world around them, um, largely with a digital first approach. That means we can help people anywhere in the world. Um, and I've been in that role for uh, just over a year now. In terms of my background and um, sort of qualifications and uh, things like that, I'm a, a chartered water and environmental manager with SIWEM. Um, and I think I've been a member of SIWEM for something like five or six years and chartered for about four. Um, I started off, uh, I, did a, I did a bachelor's degree in land economy back in, two, graduated in 2009, and then went and worked in industry for a few years and then went back to university and did a uh, MSc in environmental management in 2014. I've also done a fair number of sort of professional qualifications and things along the way. Um, so I have a certificate in accounting with uh, SEMA, the Chartered Institute of Management Accountants. I've got a project management qualification with the uh, APM. I also got a management qualification with the Institute of Leadership and Management. Um, so yeah, definitely have a sort of commitment to continuously learning. And um, I think that's an important part of, of uh, anyone's professional life. Been working in the sort of environmental and sustainability sector um, on and off for about 12 years. Um, in my first uh, job after leaving university in 2009, I worked on projects with the Environment Agency as a contractor. Um, and then I actually joined the, the Environment Agency in 2015. Um, so yes, I'd say probably 12 years on and off um, and probably seven years continuously in the environmental and, and sustainability sectors. I've sort of had a career change. Um, like I say, I, I, I have worked on environmental projects on and off for, for my whole professional life. Um, but I went and worked for about three years for a um, defense aerospace company, um, still in a, a project management function, um, but obviously in, in a, another area of engineering. Um, so I, I then decided after that to, to actively focus on environmental management as a career. Um, and it was after I left that, that role that I um, went to did my uh, master's in environmental management and also started my SIWEM membership. There's lots of things I wish I'd known at the beginning of my career, um, but most of them you can only uh, learn or, or sort of appreciate with benefit of experiencing them yourself. I think I think that what one thing I'd say is that things are rarely as bad as they first seem. Um, even if you you know you feel like you've made a massive mistake or something's gone hugely wrong, um, it's it's very rare that it's it's something that um, is as bad as it feels at first. And so even if even if things seem like uh, like they've got out of hand. It's almost always something that can be corrected, that people around you can help with um, and that you can recover from. So, um, so yeah, try, try and bear that in mind and um, don't worry too much about things at the beginning of your career. Um, well, it still doesn't feel particularly like I've like I've got somewhere in my career. Um, I, uh, it, it, you know, every every role is a sort of a new experience and um, I, I certainly feel like I'm still learning and, and I hope that I'll continue to feel like I'm learning for, for many, many years to come. Um, 
I think in terms of in terms of what where I've sort of built up to, I guess I've had a lot of luck so far, and um, you know I'd intended to go down probably a, a bit of a different career route when I um, finished my finished my bachelor's degree. Um, so that was sort of at, at the end of well in, in in 2008 2009 was when I was looking at internships and, and graduate schemes, and that was the height of the financial crisis. Um, and I was going to go into probably commercial surveying, um, where a lot of people on my course were, were looking at. A lot of those graduate schemes got cut really hard. Uh, so I ended up joining Balfour Beatty in a more, you know, more of a, a sort of focused construction infrastructure business rather than the professional services. Uh, I was on their business graduate scheme for two or three years. And that was actually uh, actually a brilliant place to end up. I got really good exposure to different projects and worked on environment agency projects that were that were fascinating. So, um, you know, that that, that was look, felt like bad luck at the time that the graduate schemes were all getting cut, um, but actually turned out to be be a great opportunity and great experience. Well, I'm, I'm not sure. I'm not sure that I'd necessarily call uh, it a career flop, but um, certainly certainly had some sort of tough experiences in, in, in different roles and different times over the years. I had a, a very tough job for about 12 months, uh, really quite early on in my career, um, that I wouldn't want to, I certainly wouldn't want to go through again. But having been through it, I'm, I'm, I'm glad that I did go through it and the experience I got from it, because uh, it taught me a lot about managing people and change under pressure. Um, and also how to avoid the situations that, that I was in at that time. So um, even those, even though those kind of experiences are painful at the time and you wouldn't want to go back through them, um, after after the event, it's it's really really valuable to learn and reflect uh, on them. I think my approach to challenges has has changed as I've both uh, you know sort of experienced success and failure and also seen other people responding to challenge. Um, it's sometimes easier to be objective and, and learn from how you see other people responding to challenges. Um, I was thinking about an example when, uh, this is quite a few years ago now, probably probably eight or nine years ago, I, I was, um, we were going through a, a really serious, a really tough series of negotiations at, at, in the job I was in between us and, and a, a really big customer. And a, a lady I was working with after one of the meetings just sort of took us all aside as a group and said, look, I know these negotiations aren't, aren't pleasant. It's a, it's a really challenging atmosphere um, and difficult to kind of work with the people that we're working with. But actually, I'm really proud to be on the side that's acted better. Um, so that's, that's a, a memory that stayed with me and that's reminded me that good teamwork and sort of strong values can help you through difficult times and you can lean on each other and um, yeah even even when things are difficult you can feel proud about how you performed under pressure yeah so my top three tips um it, it, it's it's difficult to kind of distill stuff into into really punchy tips i guess um but here's my attempt uh, number one Keep trying to put yourself forward, and um, even if you don't know how to do everything yourself, that's that, that's that's to be expected. Um, and you know that the greatest people achieve a lot through how they inspire and work with other people, not not just purely through what they do themselves. Um, so keep putting yourself forward, even if um, you know even if you don't always feel comfortable on day one. Um, ask for help. It's just from the perspective of someone who's who's been, I guess, a young manager managing teams of people who, who are much older than them, um, it's really difficult as a manager sometimes to tell when someone is struggling or to 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 sort of intuit what they're going to find difficult. But it's really really helpful if someone asks for that support early on, and then you have a much stronger relationship to help them through whatever it is that they're that they're finding difficult. Um, you know, and the times that I've I've been able to help people through difficult stuff at, at, at work or, or even in their personal life has been definitely because I've got a, a closer relationship with them to start off. 
So, you know, ask for help and, and be open about, about the help you need. And 99 times out of 100, people are, are willing to give that help. Um, and then probably my, probably my top tip actually is do take advantage at the, the start of your career of the opportunity to ask um, sort of naive questions. Um, you know, the, you can add a lot of value early on in your career by by being that person who people are happy to explain things to um, and you're not you know you're not threatening anyone when you're early on in your career you can legitimately ask questions and you can actually add a lot of value by being that person who's sort of both humble and interested um, people will get a lot out of, of te teaching you stuff and telling you why things are and they might also uh, take the op opportunity to to reflect on why things are the way they are if they if they don't seem to be um they don't seem to be the best way of working so um yeah take advantage of that because you know later on in your career people will uh you know people might might feel threatened when you ask questions or when you when you approach on their area of work but when you're uh, when you've just started then you can get away with asking pretty much anything you want so that's a that's a gift i don't have any specific recommendations about cpd um, or, or further studies but in general, what I, what I would certainly say has worked for me is never stop learning. Um, it's, it de definitely helped keep me feeling fresh, um, being continually interested and excited about, about the field we work in. Um, and it almost doesn't matter, you know, whether it's something that's, that's directly relevant to your role today. People move across functions and across across companies and even across sectors very, very rapidly at the moment. So, um, you know, you, you'll never know when a piece of information is actually going to turn out to be useful. Um, I did uh, I did myself one of the SIWEM courses a couple of years ago on um, constructed wetland design. It's it's never been something I've, I've practically needed to use uh, in the last five or six years, however long it was a bit ago I did it. Um, but then just the other day, I was having a conversation with with a water company um, and and talking about ways that they could use green infrastructure um, in, uh, in in their systems. So you never know when when this when these kind of things are going to, going to be useful. Um, and I've found the experience of of doing CPD and um, continuing to sort of have have academic interests in the background has. Give me a really good place to just reflect and, and be be a bit more um, introspective about topics that I'm interested in, rather than just focusing on what a client needs or uh, or what we need to do to close out a project. So I think whatever CPD you try you decide to do, or whatever learning or, or academic um, routes you continue to go down, just enjoy doing them and um, and, and keep doing them for as long as you can, really. <laughs> Yeah, I, I definitely would recommend mentoring. Um, I haven't, I haven't had formal mentoring myself. Um, I know a couple of people who have, who who got a lot out of it. Um, and that, so, I, I mean, I'd recommend it simply on those terms. I've, I'd certainly say I've had informal mentoring in that, um, you know, that I, that I've I've struck up relationships and and friendships with people outside my um my my sort of chain of command and um they've given me a lot of career advice but also the um uh, sort of sort of coaching and, and feedback that's that's helpful as well and, and just a reflection on um on, on problems that i have that, that i felt like i can go to them with so yeah i, I definitely recommend it um I, I recommend taking advantage of formal mentoring schemes if you if you are looking for a mentor um equally if you would like to mentor someone, um, then that can be really rewarding as well. Um, again, it's not something I've done formally, but it's been probably the aspect of line management that I, I've most enjoyed, even though I didn't realise I would, has been helping people to to develop themselves. Um, so yeah, I, I'd, I'd certainly recommend it on that basis.